Welcome to Forgotten English. And when you're doing Forgotten English, you have to slam down your leather tankard medievally. It's not medieval unless you slam down your tankard on the rough hewn slab surface and wear your medieval reading glasses. This is McKellen's and a preserving jar labeled with painter's tape, McKellen, good stuff by my good friend, Michael Magno. Um, he left it here as a gift. He didn't need to. I really appreciate it. It is amazing. I mean, I've had McKellen's before, but for some reason, this just hit me as something magic. I don't know. And medieval uh, kitchen torch to make your medieval creme brulee normally, but I'm using it for tobacco. Mmm. Oh, wow. Ew, that's better than I expected. Nice. Welcome to Forgotten English. It is a series of words put together on a series of cards by Jeffrey Kasirk, a linguist. I highly recommend you go buy his stuff. And I'm just going to read through all 50 of these as best I can, considering some of them have weird pronunciations, and I have no idea what it means. The word of the week is vampirarchy. 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 A derisive description from the 1820s for a parasitic group of politicians. Vampire entered the English language in the 1730s from such Slavonic words as the Bulgarian vampire. Myths about vampires were abundant in Europe, especially its eastern regions. In earlier times, pronouncing someone dead was so often the result of guesswork that a device called a baseman's belfry was sometimes installed in coffins. It could be rung from six feet under if the deceased awoke unexpectedly after premature burial. Premature burial. That must suck. Vampire Archie is not about vampires or any of that stuff. Remember, it's 1820s for a parasitic group of politicians. Remember it.